Okay, we are started. So today is the 19th of March. Thank you guys for tuning in our Sunday night growing with Wild Tree Call. Um, Kayla Troutman starting us out here, dressed very fancy to the nines here in my, is this the coffee sweat? Yep, it's coffee sweat shirt. Anyway, we are going to be talking tonight about trekking for leadership as we have been. And tonight specifically, um, are you kind of going in the right direction? Do you have your niche or your groove figured out? I'm going to talk about mine and then put you guys on the spot and ask you if you think you've found yours. And then um, lastly, like why is leadership worth it? A reminder back to the very first week, if you weren't with us, Tabitha, you're newer here, but um, we talked about all the perks of leadership, but I'm going to refresh us at the end. So really quick, who has something to celebrate over the last week, like period or last two weeks or progress or whatever, who has something to celebrate? Talk away. It is spring break. It is spring break, and I am happy as pie. Um, I am ready to organize my house. I got three bags full of clothes already out of my room, ready to go to Goodwill, and I can't wait to do more of that tomorrow. Woohoo! Yay! Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Sarah. You betcha. Who else has something exciting? Well, it's you. Um, I use the eight charms on St. Patrick's Day but to do um, some, like samples and um, some like percentages off and things. Um, and that, I think I had them all accounted for within like an hour. So. All that right. Was- That's very exciting. I was surprised, I'll be honest. I don't do a lot of that stuff. You guys are gonna notice. I do a ton of recipe sharing, a ton of asking for recruits and bookings on Facebook, but I don't do a ton of sales, mainly only if I'm short on a sales goal, I throw out free shipping or discontinued products I think are great ones to sell at the end because you're not devalutizing them. They're leaving the product line, right? Mm -hmm. But otherwise, won't very often see me sell a workshop bundle less than the 78 because you know what I think that does? It makes it unsellable to your, for your future hostesses. So I'm really careful with that. There's a little tidbit for you. And I think if I haven't posted in the team page yet, one of my Tuesday tips is like blatantly this simple. Don't offer free shipping when you're new. Offer instead a free product. It increases your sales volume. It helps your trip points. It helps your leader numbers. It helps all of that versus free shipping, right? So great job, Jenny, doing a percentage off or something else and not doing like, hey, spend 50, get free shipping. It doesn't grow you as much. But I was surprised. I used that graphic as well. And I actually um, have almost $400 or $500 in sales. And that has never happened. Granted, I did double back through. I had so many people show interest. They kept saying, like, are there any charms left? And I had some that had turned them down. So if somebody turned, like, number six down, I flipped it to the next person. And then I started to get confused because I have a sick child. And I didn't know where I was at or who was going to take advantage of them. So I just called out, like, okay, start fresh, one through eight, who wants them? And then I just basically gave out eight more. And so the orders have rolled in everything from like, oh, great, like a workshop bundle, a jug of oil and an Irish soda bread. I mean, big, like nice chunks of orders. So kudos to you for doing that. And thanks for sharing. I wanted to share that too. Like, I don't like go into details about that kind of stuff in our team page, because I feel like sometimes the newbies will get so wrapped up in it. But those of you that have a leadership mindset can pick and choose what's going to work for you. And my advice would be just, if you're going to do that, to be aware of what you're giving away, like do something that grows your business. Right. And that, um, you don't want to break even then why do you, like, I guess I shouldn't say you don't want to break even, but if that's your long-term vision, great. But typically you want to grow with it. You want to, you know, make more with it. So yeah. Uh, Anybody else have something they want to celebrate? Anything at all? Doesn't matter. Anything recent with your parties? Anything like I know Tabitha had a party this weekend. I know Sarah had a party this weekend. Anything that you guys were excited about from your events? Um, I posted in our group page. I think it was in our group page. Yep. You did. Um, about uh, during the demo, I felt like um, everything just really rolled naturally and. The person, my hostess, um, does Shackley, which is um, like protein shakes and uh, like another health and wellness line. And um, when I was talking to her afterwards, I was just asking her about how she felt things went and, you know, what kind of things I could change and whatever from her point of view. And she said that the, um, when I talked about menu planning and was writing stuff on the calendar, and she said how that naturally led to me showcasing items and how it didn't feel disconnected and so like whenever I wrote like pizza up on the calendar 
I would grab um, my so quick and easy pizza dough and a pizza sauce and talk about that quick. And then when I wrote um, or talked about, oh, I need a super quick night tonight because of whatever going on. And then that's how I showcased the skillet meals. And then uh, talking about uh, the make fresh bundles and then like pasta, a different way of doing pasta and mac and cheese. And so that felt, uh, that felt really good. Yay. That's, that feels good to me too. I could listen to you. Well, granted I'm eating, so I'm excited that you're chatting away, but I could listen to you talk about that and like even feel like I would learn something from that. So that's really good um, to, to tie in like how you really can use the products. Great job. Thank you. So, Thank you. Share with everyone where you're at in freaking sales this month. You're killing it, girl. Where are you at? Oh, I, uh, I don't even, I don't even know. I have a I have three workshop bundles I need to place yet tonight. I have the, I don't know, six or seven orders from the party yesterday that I would like to place yet tonight. So I don't know. I think I'm over 3,000, I think, but I'm not sure. You definitely are over 3,000. You're like oh. close with what you have to like 3,500. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. I would say, holy crap. That's a great cheers to you as I drink my wine. <laughs> yeah. You drink away. I'm laying in my, I'm sitting up in my bed right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, that's awesome though. Congratulations. That's a really great month. We're going to come back to that in a second. Um, anything else, Tabitha, Jenny, anything else? It's okay if not. Okay. So first thing I want you guys to think about, and I want you guys to talk out loud if you're willing is are you headed in the right direction? And you guys can shake your head. The one, the two of you I can see, Sarah, you can chat out loud. But do you feel like at this point, knowing you've been in this group now for a couple weeks, month actually, more than a month, um, and you're booking your calendar, right? And you're working on your parties. Do you at least feel like you're in the general right direction? Like, is your arrow at least pointed on track? Tabitha says, yes. yes. Cool. Sarah says, yes. 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 No, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So I want to walk through a quick example. Katrina, I hope she'll watch this back. Katrina's in our group and I got to talk to her today. And I want to, and I know Jenny, you got to meet her at Applebee's that one night for just a short little brief time. I don't know. Oh, and at the LeBride party as well, you got to meet her. So Katrina and I met back in fall. She joined the business, young, little young and not even 21 yet on fire. And then set really big goals for January, had them happen. And somewhere in there, we're working through this together. She ran into her first brick wall in the business. So you guys all know in this industry, just like any job, you're going to run into challenges and walls, right? And it's how you figure out what the breakdown is and then overcome it to a breakthrough. So you're going to hear me often use that language. Well, Katrina and I talked today because we still haven't figured out exactly what's causing the breakdown. So that is what I'm talking about. Her arrow was exactly on point. She was headed exactly at her goals. She had eight parties on the calendar for January some crazy things happened. Uh, three snowstorms that knocked three of her parties basically off, you know, really low attendance, really low sales. Hostess didn't really try after the fact. They were bummed that it had snowed. Um, a couple recruit leads that turned out to be more work than worth, right? We all know what that's like, or at least you, you can imagine. Um, so she just kind of got off. Her arrow turned. And in February, even though her sales were still great, she didn't let that be successful to her. And now here we sit in March and she feels like she's just spinning right back to September, October when she joined. So it's really important that we had that heart to heart today. Like what's important to you? She's going to go back to school and fall for a degree that relates to wild tree. She loves the products. And we just had to have like a, where are we going? There's no right or wrong. Is it leadership? Is it not? But if it's leadership, you can't do one party a month and be a leader. You guys all understand that, correct? Shake your head. Yes or no. You, you okay. can all. You could ultimately at my level ride that for a while, right? That makes sense to you guys. I've worked really hard. I have a, sig a significant team. I could go on maternity leave for a few months or heaven forbid I would have um, an illness or cancer. I need to go through treatment. Like I could now at this point have something horrific happen and sustain for a while. But Wild Tree's compensation plan is so incredible, but it's also set up so that you can never just ride the system. So, and that's out of respect for people that you're bringing in. It's, it's a thing that Wild Tree has stated that says, like, we will always have to work so that we're never just relying on our team. Okay. So anyway, her arrow is off. We're working on it together. Does anybody feel like they need that? Like a little kick in the pants or revisit a vision? Or do you guys feel like you're going where you want this to go? I, I feel good. Go ahead. You feel good, Sarah? Is that what you said? Yeah. Perfect. Tabitha, Jenny? Uh, for me, I guess being so new, 
and you know just having my first party my launch party i feel like i'm going in the right direction mm -hmm. but also i probably could use like a kick in the pants like just to keep me on track i don't know okay yep that's what this group is for sarah's good at that she's a good accountability partner um sometimes it's hardest when you're new because there's a lot of new excitement that'll eventually wear off you know that from this industry um, Sarah's actually still in that new excitement, I would say, too. The difference is she's really dug her heels in. And um, Sarah, I'm just going to – I'm going to kudos to you again. It's your week, girlfriend. You are like our rising star. Um, she has made contact after contact. She is reaching out to people. She really is seeking a bigger picture here with Wild Tree. So if you're new and you're like, okay, I think I'm doing great, which, Tabitha, I would agree with you. Your calendar's looking great. You're doing an awesome job of – paying attention to what you did at one party and saying, Oh, I think I want to change it for the next one. Or I want to adjust this. That is bingo. That's the money. The last thing I would tell you is just to be outreaching, make sure you're reaching people. I'm um, doing your follow-ups to people who have already bought. And again, you might just be at that time where it's a little bit like they might not have their orders yet and stuff, depending right. But making sure you do follow up. And then you're also reaching out to X number a week, because that's really what Sarah's doing to grow. She's not only having big parties, but she's not, she's overbooking her calendar basically so that she's protected. I mean, Sarah, would you agree with that? I'm putting words in your mouth. Um, I just have some big stuff coming up with my sister's wedding and everything that I'm just trying to plan around some big things that are coming up. And so I feel like weekend dates are what people want, first of all. And I am trying to work around them knowing that it's not going to occupy my entire day, you know, every weekend day. Um, and without, I mean, to speak to the reaching out part, I, it's true that I have reached out to a ton of people and I have not gotten much feedback, especially for the business opportunity. So, I mean, I'm at least putting bugs in their ear and, um, but it's getting frustrating not hearing anything back and seeing on messenger that, yep, they saw my message and they're not saying anything. And I followed up and they're still not saying anything. And so that's kind of my little hiccup right now is I don't want to push too hard and you know, be that person. Um, but I also would like a little bit of insight as to what they're thinking. So. Yep. And I do think if you've done the follow-up and you know that you've done it, like, I think your gut tells you always the answer. So if you feel like you've done, um, the follow-up to the level you should, then, Hey Jenny, can you do me a huge favor? I see that Jacqueline just commented in our group. Is she trying to get into the call and can't, can you just look, are you able to see? I can look. Thank you. Um, so Sarah, I think you're right. Go with your gut. If your gut says you followed up enough, don't push it because there's a difference and that kind of relates into number two. So we'll come back to this, but it's really important. I think even in my bit, like my business now, you guys, I have turned a lot of recent parties into recruits. Like I've offered them the opportunity to join and they've said yes. And so like, you guys know what happens then, right? Like I'm willing to do that, but that's my sales then that have gone out the window to that person. Not that that's bad, it's great for growth, right? But for me personally then, it affects my like trip points, my goals, et cetera. So even I am reaching out to five to 10 cold contacts a week. Five to 10 people that I'm just reaching out to and saying like, um, that is so weird. Jenny just switched places with Tabitha. That it just freaks me out my eyes. Okay, <laughs> anyway, so I reach out to five to 10 people that I've never talked to a week and sometimes Sarah, I never hear back from them even when I do my follow-ups. But many times I do, and you guys just recently, I sold a workshop bundle and another 50% off bundle to just a stranger that we've been Facebook friends for forever. I had to actually say like, did I know you from college or how do I even know you? She's like, yeah, we were in statistics together. I'm like, okay. Anyway, that's my 10, my five to 10 people a week that I'm reaching out to cold. And then the rest I'm doing massive follow-up with, especially in months like this month where I've rolled a lot of recruit leads into those parties that I had. So why I share that is, um, that's a part of heading in the right direction. You just have to know where your vision is and not be worried about the current exact day. Because if I was, I wouldn't be asking every hostess to join the business, right? I'd be so worried about my sales, but instead I know I can make that up with contacts and the work. Sarah, it's the most common to not hear back from recruit leads. That's the number one thing, but kudos to you for being proud of your business enough to ask, but also don't let that be like, if they don't get back to you, that's okay. Move on. You, for the longest time, I asked to be in the business, and then I didn't ask you at all. <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? No, I asked you for a while in the beginning, and then I didn't ask you for like a year, I think. Right? I mean, I didn't, I don't think I it was. Had. It was a while. Yeah, it was a while. Because I didn't want to be that person, just like you said. Like, I knew you then knew at that point what Wild Tree could do for you. I knew you followed me on social media, so I put the bug in your ear a couple times, and then I let you watch, and now you're top in sales in our team. So, 
just know like what you're doing pays off and just be as professional as respectful and respectful as you can be and you'll be just fine. Tabitha, anything you would add from your past experience with this? Like anything you would add to that? Um, no, I think you said it perfectly. Like just keep putting that seed out there and eventually it's going to grow. Yeah. And I think Sarah, you were great tonight where you shared in the group. Like if you're not doing your homework and posting food on Facebook, you should be food and recipes sell. That's what people want because they, everybody wants to eat better. Um, Danielle Santry on our team shared this week in our main page about how uh, general Mills spoke at one of her conferences. And he said the middle of the grocery store is shrinking every year by about five to 10% in overall sales, their products, because people want what we have. People want either a Blue Apron and a HelloFresh subscription service, or they want our all natural organic products. So kudos to you for sharing them because that's exactly where we need to be at right now. Um, okay, so with the second part of this, then are you headed in the right direction? Comes, are you finding your group? So Tabitha, you're newer. Sarah, you've been with us long enough and used Wild Tree enough that I'm gonna pick on you first, I think. And then I can't see Jenny. Jenny, are you still there? Yep. Okay, what did Jacqueline say? Did she need us? Um, she said she was having a hard time and then I messaged her and commented with the link again. Okay. Otherwise she could just call in too if she needs to. Um, okay, perfect. So anyway, I just get like a jalapeno thing. That's also on this salad, Sarah. So Sarah, do Yum. you feel like, yeah, it's so good. Do you feel like at this point you are finding your niche, your groove? I'm guessing yes to a good extent because of what you shared in the beginning of how you're doing a lot of the menu planning with your customers. Like, are you feeling like you're finding what makes your heart feel good when you leave a party, but it's also working for your sales, your booking and your recruiting? Yeah, I'm actually surprised at my, the sales that I end up getting after the, um, the party. Um, and it's it just, I, I feel very natural with what I say. Like the first party or two, I had my binder out and I was looking at my notes and everything. And now it's just like, I just kind of, I do a very brief overview of how Wild Tree started and the three ways to Wild Tree with being a customer, being a hostess and the business opportunity. And then that rolls right into um, menu planning because at least in all the parties that I've had so far, everybody is asking for or wanting like in the, in the introductions when they, when we ask um, if you could walk out of here with one more thing today, you know, what would it be? People are asking for recipe ideas and meal planning and everything. And so it's just been a natural way for me to, to lead into all of that. And I think I posted something about this too, where I do bring a lot of stuff and I do make, you know, quite a bit of food for the people to try. And I do have a lot of my fridge emptied out, but I feel that that extra work and even me bringing my own personal products and going through some of my own stash has paid off in the end too. And so, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've found my groove as far as the demos and everything. The one place where I'm struggling and I am thankful for spring break this week is um, organizing my order forms and the follow-up. I have to get better with the follow-up. So I bought a plain planner that had empty calendars in it where I can, you know, start now with March and I can go back and backtrack and figure out when I need, like put it in my calendar separate from all my school meetings and everything. And this is just my wild tree planner um, because it's getting a little bit overwhelming, but I have to do it because I know how important it is and everything. So um, yes. Yeah. So to answer the question, yes, I feel like I'm in the groove um, with the, with the problem of needing to work on organization and follow up. Okay. Awesome. So I, can I constructively criticize just one thing? Absolutely changing your mindset because you are worth this Sarah so changing your mindset when you say I don't even know how I'm getting those sales or I'm surprised by those sales you just explained to a group of very intelligent and excited women right Tabitha I can see you smiling mm -hmm. you know where I'm gonna go you just helped them a ton because you just yeah. basically said you hit on the three ways to wild tree right off the bat without fear without hesitation that's what there are. There are three ways to wild tree and obviously more interjected in there, but you're hitting on that right away. And then because of that, your calendar is full and your sales are rocking because you're helping people. You're meeting them where they're at. So I just want you, the only criticism I have is that I want you to not have that, like, I don't know why they're buying from me because the truth is that's what the point number two topic is tonight is when you find your niche, the sales just automatically happen. And pretty soon the recruits, the seeds you're planting also come along. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay.
So that'd be my only, there's nothing else I would critique in anything you're doing, nothing. And I even smiled when you said you bring a lot of stuff because my new rep, Tiffany, today, she went over the top beautiful display her sales were amazing she's got like six parties booked um it works our products sell themselves and a really quick tip for you guys if you ever get low this doesn't apply to jenny because she's never going to get low if you ever get low on stock um one thing you can always do is host in your home or do the saint patrick's day sale and when you put in stuff like that under your name as a party or jacqueline your vendor event sales if you chose to do this put them in as a party and you get to, to reap the benefits of those free items so get a few sauces that you're out of or get things like I get happen in hot pepper, s'mores dip, and the dipping oils all the time with my free money because those aren't things that we can get as samples and those are awesome things to carry to a party. And you guys, as long as you keep them refrigerated like up until the party starts and then have them out for the party and then get them back in the fridge, you can use those sauces and stuff. Gosh, like 15 parties, really. You're using like this much, you know, unless you can't even see. Okay, there we go. Unless you're obviously like pouring them over meatballs or a meat of some kind or something. I mean, that or a pizza crust. I realize there's certain circumstances, right? But for the most part, if you're doing a good sampling, you can take a lot of stuff. Just my one tip on that would be take it in one tote. Make sure you're not carrying in like 15 totes of products. It looks very not doable to the next person. So if you're going to carry in stuff, I have 131 totes that all my products go in with my bag holders and my graham crackers and my chocolate chips for the s'mores dip. And then the other product that comes in is all my catalogs, all my folders I use for my demo, my booking basket and my pens. I'm down to just two bags and I leave my purse in the car because it looks like less stuff then. Um, mm -hmm. Today when I got to Tiffany's house, the only other thing I took was a workshop bundle because it was a tasting. And I think showcasing one workshop bundle is pretty cool. So any questions on that really quick, as long as we're on that. Jenny, I don't want to know what you're taking to your parties. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally picking at her. Well, she hung over. No. What'd you say? So you probably don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay. So Jacqueline, hello. It's good to see you. Hi. Um, we had a chance at the beginning to celebrate, and I want you to be able to celebrate what you did over the last week because you had a great week. Um, so do you want to share with everybody what you did? Yeah, I had um, three vendor events this week, and... I got better at it with each one. So the first one, I didn't really know what I was doing and then kind of got better with each one. Um, so I got some, you know, interested people in possibly joining. Haven't heard back from them yet, but I'll touch base again with them. Um, week, but have, you know, several new customers that were excited about some of the things that I brought and that I made. Um, and then I had a bit of sales. So um, I think maybe $260 in sales or so, which was pretty good. So, uh, so that was exciting. Way to go. Kudos. Thanks. Yeah, I would 100% agree. I was trying to take a picture of all of us, but then I realized because you were talking, that would be a really like not fair picture. So really quick, I'm going to redo this. I'm going to take a picture and then I'm going to comment on the vendor first. So everybody smile. I'm smiling okay, so, too. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you for humoring my very corny, fun personality. I'm working on fun. Remember, this is like my 2017 mission. Okay. Well, along with many other missions, let's just be real, but one of them is fun. Jacqueline, you did an amazing job. Kudos to you. An awesome job in sales. I was so excited when you told me the amount of you know sales you had for a vendor event, especially a fast paced vendor event where they weren't necessarily there to buy, but they were there to be working out and stuff. Awesome, awesome job. You'll rock the follow-up, I have no doubt. So I wanted to let you be able to have a chance to celebrate. Um, yeah, kudos to you. So the first part of our call, you can go back and watch the little beginning part, was about um, if we are an arrow, is our arrow headed in the right direction? Do you feel like you're headed in the right direction? And I would guess you're going to say yes. You're new, like Tabitha said, but do you feel like you're heading in the right direction currently? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gaining confidence with every event and um, getting more people excited. So you know, I just need to work on sharing the business and figuring out how to reach more people that way. But I'm learning and feel like it's definitely going in the right direction, I'm not going backwards and I'm not kind of stuck. So. Okay, cool. So if you rewatch the video, I shared a good example of somebody on our team. She's in this group actually. And I talked to her today and I know she doesn't mind that I shared her story. Um, and so it kind of talks about how it's really easy to get off focus. It was great to recognize it and together we're 
get her arrow point it back at whatever her vision is, right? I'm not tied to your guys' vision. You all know that, right? I am directly driven on mine, but I'm so motivated to help each of you get there. However, I'm never disappointed in you. I want to make sure I say that your success only disappoints me if it disappoints, like, or your failures only disappoint me if they disappoint you. Like, I'm not tied to that outcome. Like, I can't be in this industry. I can be sad with you. And like, I told Katrina a couple swear words on the phone because she had an interesting situation happen with a recruit lead. And it was just so I told her I shared that pain with her, not vocally to her at the time, because I don't want to put her even further into the triangle, right? The negativity where you play the victim or the persecutor. Instead, I wanted to keep her in the circle and keep her focused on where her vision was. But I wanted her to know, just like with all of you, when something crappy happens, I'm talking about it with Nate, and I'm usually swearing about it even more than you know, but I don't want you to have to go there. So I carry that burden with you, and then it's just our job to refocus and make sure we repoint your arrow. That was number one. Number two is finding your niche. Does anybody know what most of my customers, Sarah, you were a long time customer of mine, like first party I ever did customer of mine. Um, does anybody want to guess what my customers tell me is my number one reason they party with me or they continue to buy wild truth with me or they, they're active in my um, recipe group? Who knows what it would be? What's the number Personality. one? Personality. It's all personality. Very few people care two shits about wild truth, I'm pretty sure. They don't say that, but let's be Today at Tiff's party, um, most of them said it was one of the most fun parties they've ever been at. And there's no better compliment to somebody who started this business and was boring. Uh, my parties were so boring. But um, believe I know it seems like you can't believe it now, but they really were. And so it was such a neat thing for me to put back in perspective that I was Tiff. I just had this like, aha today, and I wanted to share it with you. But I don't think I was nervous. I don't think I was ever nervous in front of a crowd. It's just not natural for me. But I do think I stumbled over words. I got in the car many a time, still do, because I talk so much, so fast. I have the opposite effect happen than, than an introvert or a nervous person. I just spew out stupid things and then I go home, I'm like, they're never gonna buy from me again. They're never even gonna like talk to me again. But what I find is when you're genuine, which I really am, I wanna help people, like you said, Sarah, I wanna help them eat good, help a menu plan, help answer any questions I can, make sure they're using their products, blah, blah, blah. Then they find it funny. And instead of annoying or rude or whatever they maybe would think when I say something silly, they laugh hysterically, like wine snorting out their nose. Like I have a lot of fun. So I just want to say that to you. When you find your personal niche and everybody's a little bit different, besides that, I would say my wild tree niche is I love helping women feel like they have control of something. It might be their menu. It might be um, the choices that they're making for their health, even if their kids are super picky. It's choice for them to make a salad versus eat a grilled cheese, right? Or I'm not saying that a grilled cheese is bad. I don't want to make sure. I want to make sure I make that very clear. Everyone's nutritional goals are different, but I want them to feel empowered that they don't just have to go through the motions every day, go to a job they hate, eat meals because that's all their family will eat, their husbands, you know, poo pooing, clean eating. Like I love, I think my niche is empowering people. And I think, Sarah, you would say that from the length of time you've known me. Jenny, I think you would say that. Like I want people to feel like they have options right? A reason to get up and get excited in the morning about something. If you love your job, awesome. If you don't, I have an option for you. If you love what you're eating, awesome. But I have really good food. Do you want to get free? Because every husband loves free more than, you know, money out of the checkbook. I have an option for you. And that's, I think, what my niche is. So I would encourage you, because we're going to run out of time, to work on that this next week. Like, what's your niche going to be? And you might not know it for a few parties yet, but it's really important to have a niche, have something that you feel like sets you apart. And no matter what, back to my video I made Friday, just be professional and, and be the best you you can be. And that will show across other reps who are not doing that in other industry or I mean, other companies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last part is, why does all this matter? Um, I was hoping we'd have more time for that section to discuss, but we're going to get cut off. So um, this all matters because at the end of the day, you guys are all doing a fabulous job. And the more that you put into this, the more you want to make for compensation, right? So a fast reminder, Sarah, I'm going to use you as an example if it's okay. Sarah is yeah. going to at least $3,500 in personal sales this month. So woo woo to Sarah. That's awesome. Um, and Sarah, this is your third month in business, right? Um, yeah, January, February, March. Yep. 
So Jacqueline, that gives you, because I know your vision is really big for many cool, awesome, amazing family reasons. Um, it should give you a lot of hope because you're on exactly the right track. You're doing exactly what she's doing. And if you need to pick her brain and all, I know Sarah will tell me that that's okay that I offer that and to anybody else. Um, Jenny, you're doing fabulous. I love your calendar setup and Tabitha, you're brand new and your calendar's filling. So that you guys are exactly where you need to be. Okay, so keep doing that and do that with, a vengeance, if you will, because you guys are on the brink. Like Sarah, you're going to make 32% this month, but you could be making 40 for the exact same thing you did. I know. And that's what's frustrating. Oh. No, no, don't be frustrated. Don't be frustrated. I'm telling you though, because you guys like she's right there, right? So cheer Sarah on this month because she would need just two people to put in 350 and she'd get paid as a leader next month. She does have to do it two months in a row. Does everybody understand how our leadership program works? Shake your head. Awesome. And Sarah had asked me that question this week. If she gets the two recruits, do, does she still have to have them do 350? Because she's going to have the 3,500 herself. And she still does. What's really cool about that is not only does she then get the 40%, but who knows what starts to happen when she's a leader with those team members? Who knows? Give me numbers. What does she get if, if she would get her two? Oh, 12. Isn't it 12, 12%? 12%, which starts to add up a lot faster than 3%. Right. And then rightfully so you're helping them. You're getting them started. You're loving on them and cheering them on. And really Kayla does the training. As long as you, you like my training style and you want me to, I don't have, I want to say that I don't have to do your training. I'm not a control freak anymore. Everybody's free to do whatever they want, but if you want my services, I welcome and offer them to you. So anyway, basically you do nothing different, right? I send the welcome email. I do the orientation call. I train up your new reps. Um, I make sure that they're feeling confident. Same thing as you. I offer them little prizes and goodies along the way, and you get to reap those rewards. So I hope that excites you about being in this organization where we really work as a team. But that's just the beginning. You get to walk across stage at conference. You get to earn a free vacation. All of you get to count the points you're racking up now for the trip, but you can't go on the trip if you're not a team leader. That's important to know, okay? You get a surprise from Leslie, like shortly after you promote, deliver to your house. You get... Um, special trainings, special perks when you attend any kind of uh, conference or company sponsored event, they put credits in your account to buy the new products. You get extra business bucks every month. The rewards are endless. You can serve on the product testing committee. Did anybody see my new set of products? Do you guys want to know what they are? I'll tell you, but you cannot tell yeah. Okay, you ready? This is so cool. Okay, gluten-free breadcrumbs. Stoked about that one. Okay, Jacqueline's eyes lit up. Yeah. Two different kinds of curry. Super, ex yeah, dry curry powder. Super excited about that. Um, a, oh, shoot. A cranberry pineapple jam or a cranberry. Oh, I'm killing this one. Maybe, maybe roux. Some kind of jam or jelly. Um, <laughs> it's in a jar. I have to cook something with it. Um, oh, a really weird one that traditionally is kind of like an Indian dish. And I know a lot of our customers ask Ooh. for that. So we'll see if we get that. And then, um, there's one more in there. They were all great this time. I, I'm usually pretty excited about them, but this time they were great. And I know like, to give you an example, about 50, 50 of them end up becoming a product. Like um, cornbread was one I tested at the beginning of my product testing term and it became a gluten-free cornbread in our catalog now. So about 50, 50 happened to like come through, but likelihood now of like what I'm testing now coming out like this year yet, it'll probably be like January's products if that makes sense. So it takes a little bit of time to go through all the testing and stuff, but it's a fun committee. So there's all these fun things you can serve on and be a part of as you promote up the ranks, extra Facebook groups. Not that any of us need more Facebook groups. Let's be real. Yeah, let's be real. Um, so you get it though. So any questions about any of that? We probably have like two or three minutes before it's going to cut us off. Any questions, any celebration, any, anything? I almost hit 2000 in sales overall. Shut up for real already. Yeah. And actually I have to put an order in tonight that will put me over. Yay. Exciting. Keep um, collective bracelet for you, baby. Woo woo. That's exciting. Yep. Do I have, oh, I don't have it on anymore. The, um, ladies that went to leadership this year, they don't know it, but they're going to get a charm for going to leadership. And I bought that one for myself just because I really loved it. And I'm giving them like the United States to represent traveling. If you guys go to conference, you get an airplane, if you go on a trip, you get sunglasses and all kinds of other fun things, um, which we can also talk about too. I don't have a plan for after conference. This was a one year conference to conference incentive. I don't have a plan for next year yet. So I'd love your feedback if you want to personally message me, if you have an idea, but the bracelet was fun. And I think most of our team loved it a lot. So Anything else? Anybody else have something to celebrate? Double chin in this camera because I look like up at the screen, but 
phone is right there and it's angry. <laughs> I mean, I know, like, I'm not judging myself, not like self hating, but I'm just saying, it literally looks like I have two chins. <laughs> I'm blaming the fact that I'm going to the gym because my baby has a fever and it's been rough and my wine glass is empty. Don't worry. We're going to drink more wine and watch a movie tonight. <laughs> good. Hey, husband, where, real, oh, go ahead. real quick. Where do you, where do you get your bag holders? Oh, Amazon. Amazon. Okay. You don't have to have them. You could go with dollar bowls. You guys that, that worked for me for a long time. because it was cheaper. I bought $10 bowls and then I bought a few more after that. Cause I had some bigger. You bought what? That. 10, $1 bowls. At the dollar store. Oh, they could put their bag in the bowl. Yeah, then you just then got just, it. The bag holders are got it. Piece. So what I did is yep. over like a year time, I bought three bag holders at a time because you guys are going to have a lot of smaller parties, right? Three, six, nine people. So three at a time worked, and now um, I have like fifteen, I think. Although sometimes people take them, or they say they don't take them, but they take them. Um, you can smile. People are stinker sometimes but i mean it's fine it doesn't matter so just you could go with bowls or baskets from the dollar store or you can even probably find them at 50 cents after easter and they wouldn't even probably be easter themed you could probably find some cute stuff right but that's a great okay thing. yeah they were just taking up i do too many parties now but that was taking up too much room on my counter i would rinse them and then they would dry and they would just be it was too much in my house the bag holders go to the dishwasher and they're small so for me it works out better in my business but i use the bowls 